Welcome back, it's me Lou, and I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review, and today we are looking at this, the Marvel Legends 3-pack that includes Psylocke, Nimrod, and Phantom X. Okay, so this set is um, came out a couple of months back, it's, it's not new, um, I've been, I was on the fence um, on this one for a long time. When they first announced it, I was kind of excited because I kind of needed a Phantom X um, to round out my X-Men collection. Um, I passed on the carded one that came out uh, years ago. And, you know, I've been kicking myself ever since. Uh, but when they announced this three-pack, I was kind of excited. I'm like, oh, cool. I'll, get, I'll be able to um, add Phantom X to my collection. But unfortunately, the price of this Amazon exclusive was pretty high. I think the suggested retail price was about 80 bucks. And I'm like, I don't need it that bad. Um, I already have uh, Psylocke. N Nimrod's okay. Um, I didn't, it's not, he's not necessarily one of my favorite Marvel X-Men villains. Um, I, he wasn't like a must get But I, I really wanted a, a Phantom X. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to wait. Uh, maybe the price will drop one day, or maybe I'll get lucky and run into the old one. So then, uh, one day, not too long ago, maybe it, was, <laughs> maybe it was a Tuesday or something, I was combing around on Amazon, and I'll just randomly just like search Marvel Legends stuff, and you know, see if there's any new figs out, anything on sale, or just if there's any of this oddball stuff. And for some reason, you know, whenever I search out Marvel Legends, the Amazon exclusive set always pops up, and now you know it's always it's super expensive. Um, you know, it, it, I never see it below uh, seventy-eight or seventy-five dollars. Except one morning, I was up early, and for whatever reason, Amazon marked it down. Um, they took thirty-five dollars off of it, and I wasn't sure what was going on. Um, at first, I thought it was a third-party seller that dropped their price, but it was actually Amazon, and I'm like, okay. Uh, it's thirty-five dollars off, meaning it's only like forty or forty-five dollars. I'm like, I can't pass up on it. Um, I mean, the standard individual Marvel Legends figure is normally what, like twenty, twenty-four dollars, and the larger figs, such as this, something like this, you know, it's about the same size as maybe like Apocalypse or whatever. And a figure like that normally goes for like thirty bucks, or even a little more. And I'm like, all right, thirty or forty-five dollars is perfect for this three set. I'm willing to you know dive in and get it so i did and i was very fortunate because the following day this thing went back to its regular price of like 80 bucks so i was lucky i got it for a great deal and that's what we're gonna look at we're gonna take a look at this uh, so here we have um the three pack unfortunately it doesn't fit underneath my document cam it's that big um the window does a great job of framing all the characters you have psylocke you have nimrod and you have phantom x on the side of the package on the spine you have a illustration of Psylocke I believe it's done by I want to say artist David Nakayama I might be wrong on that but I think that might be his work and likewise you have um, a portrait of Phantom X Jean-Philippe and on the back you have all three characters uh, Phantom X Nimrod and Psylocke so let's get this three pack open And here we are. Um, so, first impressions while it, the figures are still in their plastic tray. Um, I'm glad I bought it. <laughs> That's the first thing that comes to mind. Now, I had a hard time. I couldn't bring myself to purchase this at the suggested retail price, like 80 bucks. Not that, I mean, 80 bucks is a lot of money. You know, that's a given, but it's, I already had Psylocke. I didn't need her that bad. Um, this Phantom X is the character I really wanted. Uh, I'm a fan of the character. I loved him ever since his introduction in um, Grant Morrison's uh, new X-Men. Uh, Nimrod. I don't have too many memories of Nim Nimrod. Um, I think his most recent appearance. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he appeared maybe like almost two years ago um, in Powers of Ten, uh, Jonathan Hickman's X-Men book. It's kind of like when they took the X-Men and they kind of refocused them. 
and they had that uh, the two miniseries. They had House of X and Powers of Ten. And I think Nimrod was in Powers of Ten. I think he was one of the big baddies in that, if I remember correctly. Now, the Psylocke's cool. Um, I think this is a lesser-known version of Psylocke. Uh, more people, I think, are more likely to pick up the 90s version. This is a very... this I think this is a very short-lived costume. I want to say she wore this um, a couple years back during the Marvel Now era. And she might she might have re-picked up this costume recently in some of the books she's been in. Like uh, Fallen Angels and maybe in... Uh, I want to say maybe X... Not X... She's been popping up in Excalibur, maybe in that. Uh, I want to say maybe Fallen Angels and maybe X-Factor, I think. Or, um, not X-Factor, X-Force. Alright, so let's take a look at some of these figures. Um, I might not take out the accessories because, in all honesty, I don't want to deal with the headache of trying to find them later. Um, let's start with Psylocke first. Okay, so Psylocke is a figure I've been kind of dreading to review just because I feel like I've handled this this figure like dozens of times because it uses the same female body as a lot of the other Marvel Legends figures. Um, or, let me try, try to move her foot. And it, it's, it's try, I mean, it's a tried and true design, but there's countless of characters that share the same you know, mold, and for me, it just gets kind of tiresome. I feel like I'm buying the same thing over and over again. But it's a nice figure to have. Um, I have the last release of Psylocke. Now, I believe this is the, the second release, because I think the first release had the black hair, where this was the corrected one with the purple hair. Um, skin tone-wise, uh, I think this, this one does a better job of capturing... Um, Psylocke skin tone. It's a much more, it's a lighter color, it's a more fair color. Uh, it's really reflective of her Asian, I believe, Japanese heritage. This, this is Psylocke, she kind of has a slight tan to it. Um, they share the same head mold. Uh, this one has blue eyes, and I think this one has darker blue eyes. They shared. Uh, they have different actually colored lipsticks. This one's a little bit more purple. I'm not sure if the camera's catching that, where this one's a little bit more reddish pink. Um, I like the belt accessory. It's nice. Uh, I'm not sure if this is new. Uh, this I like has the wrap that kind of just dangles, whereas this one actually has one. And there's actually a sculpted X emblem on it, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, if you've handled this figure before, it's nothing new. Um, you know, it's pretty much just a straight-up repaint. The hair is awesome on the new one just because it kind of, like, has two different shades of purple. It has a darker purple, and it kind of fades into a lighter purple, back to dark, then back to light, and then back to dark again. Yeah, so this is the Psylocke I think most people remember. Um, you know, she was... This is like 90s Jim Lee Psylocke. Uh, this is more so Psylocke from the Marvel Now era. Um, I think this is more so when she kind of headed up Uncanny X-Force. Um, and I think it was, a, it was a little more serious take on the character. I think they wanted to get beyond the fact that she just ran around in a, in a one-piece bikini. Um, you know, they wanted to really amplify her stuff and her the fact that she's a ninja and I, I kind of like this look on her I thought, I thought it was a cool modern take on the on the Psylocke character and Psylocke she's just an interesting character on the you know just in general uh, when they brought her back two years ago the, the, with the whole house of X powers of 10 they finally separated the two consciousnesses so you have uh, Betsy Braddock she's no longer um, Psylocke she's taking up the mantle of Captain Britain, and she's back in her own her own body, whereas the original host body for Cy for this version of Psylocke, uh, Kwanin, also known as Revanche, she's taken up the mantle as um, Psylocke. So you actually have the, both characters running around in the universe. They don't share the same body anymore. And if you're new to that kind of like X-Men mythos, it probably sounds very confusing, and it is. Um, <laughs> I still get very confused about it. 
So yeah, it's Psylocke. Um, decent figure. If I had to rate this numerically, I don't know, seven or eight. It's, you know, as much as I'm burned out on this mold, it's a very tried and true design. And if you're a fan of um, this look, it's I think it's a, it's a very short-lived look. If, you, if you're a fan of this look, especially like when she was heading up X-Force, um, it's great, you know, they've released a couple of Marvel Legend X-Men figures in the X-Force colors. Um, I believe X-23, Wolverine, um, Deadpool. I think we're, we're missing a, a Warpath in his gray and black white outfit. Uh, I don't think we have a, a Domino yet in her um, X-Force outfit either. But this is a great figure nonetheless. You know, if, even if you don't have this Psylocke, this is a good placeholder, you know. Uh, so next up, let's do uh, Jean-Philippe, also known as Phantom X. Okay, so we have Phantom X here. All right, so I passed up um, on the previous carded version of Phantom X. That came out some time ago. I mean, it's been a long, it's been a long, long time since the Marvel Legends um, came out on uh, carded, carded uh, figures. I mean, the retro figures are carded now, but most of them are predominantly boxed. But this guy came on a card back in the day, and uh, this one's actually a little bit different. Um, I believe the the legs are different. It might share the same coat. Uh, I believe the holster and the belt is completely different also. So I think this one, this figure might have a little bit more of the modern engineering than the previous one. Um, and it's cool. I like Phantom X a lot. My biggest worry with these like white figures is I always kind of worry that over time maybe they'll, they'll start to yellow or discolor. And uh, I was kind of hoping for this release of Phantom X, they would actually give us the all white costume. Uh, this is more so his X-Force uniform, and it would make sense because the Psylocke I just reviewed, that's her X-Force uniform also. But I, I really want this the pure white Phantom X. I think that's a great look. This isn't bad, though. It's decent. Um, just like Psylocke, this is one of those things where I feel, I feel like I've, I've held and managed this mold like dozens and dozens of times. Um, but I mean, that's just, you know, the industry, uh, a lot of reuse you see in Marvel Legends. That's, that's why they can, um, crank out figures as fast as they can. You know, a lot of figures share the same bodies, they share the same arms. But this is a head sculpt, I believe, that's this unique to, unique to this character. Uh, I want to say his holsters is, I don't know, maybe this might have been something that, uh, we might have already seen with Deadpool. Um, I hate these things on his boots. He has these straps on his boots. Uh, Cy Cyclops had them, and they never stay in place. They always just drop. That's something I can appreciate with the McFarlane toys, is that uh, we get so many unique sculpts with their line of action figures. Whereas these, you know, I'm sure we've seen these gloves used before with, like, Captain America. It's a nice figure, though. If I had to rate this guy numerically, I'd probably easily just give him a 7. Uh, I like the character a lot. I kind of wish they'd do a deluxe um, box set of this figure. And I, what I would like to see is I'd like to see, you know, they give us the white Phantom X. And then they package him with his little UFO, um, EVA. I think that'd be awesome. So if you don't know what EVA is, it's um, Phantom X's it's the physical manifestation of his nervous system. And it's kind of like um, this weird looking shape-shifting spaceship UFO and he kind of travels around in it and he could talk to it and all the sorts of wild things and I, I, I don't remember what his powers are like a lot of X-Men and mutant characters in the Marvel Universe uh, power sets get kind of changed over time or they're not always made clear and sometimes they'll give them new powers or you don't really know what they do to begin with and I think one of the big deals about this guy is I think he had three brains um, he had three brains, I think, at, during one of the missions or whatever, he died, and then Wolverine had him resurrected, but this was pre, um, House of X, and then when he was re resurrected, I think each brain went into a new, different host body, 
And if that sounds confusing, it is, because <laughs> apparently I'm always confused about X-Men stuff. I almost forgot to mention this thing about Phantom X. All right, so one of the things I do like about uh, this version... All right, so I was t saying earlier that I really want the plain white version of Phantom X, but the one thing I do like about this character is that this costume reminds me of this. It reminds me of Storm Shadow. Uh, so this was from the G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra line that came out many years ago. And here was a variation of Storm Shadow. And I think this was the second release of him. Because I think he came initially as all white. And that might have been called like Paris Pursuit Storm Shadow or something. But this one's called Storm Shadow Arctic Threat. And when I look at this figure phantom X in this costume <laughs> all i see is storm shadow in this action figure so it's it's actually kind of really cool so if you're a gi joe collector or if you um dabble in the three and three quarters x-men figures grab this storm shadow and you can kind of pretend it's phantom x um it's, i don't know i just think it's a really neat coincidence so um let's get back to what we were talking about and finally let's take a look at Let's take a look at Nimrod. Um, this is a nice figure. Um, if they sold this guy as a single for the same price they kind of do their other large deluxe figures like um, Apocalypse, uh, I think the Hulk. You know, if they sold this guy for 30 bucks, I'd buy this guy by himself for 30 bucks. Even though he's not a must-have for me, it's just I need more villains in my rogue gallery of x-men characters and nimrod's okay he's pretty cool this is very heavy this almost kind of reminds me of um what's the name of that one it's a it's an old jeff darrow frank miller comic book and late fox later had a um cartoon of it it's like i think it's called like rusty and it's like big boy and rusty rusty no it's was it rusty it's like big boy and rusty the robot for some reason, this this <laughs> this figure kind of reminds me of that, um, and it's cool. It's heavy. He has his turns at the at the at the at the chest. But for, I've had bad luck, to be honest. Um, I did a review last night. I didn't post it yet of a Hasbro budget Thor Infinity War figure, and the leg broke. I didn't, this was after I filmed the video. I was like fiddling around with it and the leg broke. And with Hasbro stuff, I'm always so hesitant to move around the joints because I've had so many figures just break on me right right out of the box. And it's not like I'm like handling them really hard. They're, it's just like, a, there's a lot of weird manufacturing defects. And there's like Facebook pages that are just dedicated to like quality control issues that people have with the Marvel Legends stuff. Uh, but this is, a, this is a cool guy. He's, he's nice. He's weighty. Um, it's a cool robot. Even if he didn't know what Nimrod was, if he just wanted some cool science fiction robot, this get this guy. He kind of reminds me of those guards, especially his face here. I mean, if you could block out his face and just fill it out with like a black lens or something, it almost kind of reminds me of those guards in the movie Tron. And since I have him here, I, 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 eh, I have a couple of other giant robots right next to me. So this is Avengers Mech Strike Iron Man in his mech suit. And if you look, they're kind of roughly the same size. This guy was, I believe, 20 bucks, and he came with a mech suit and a basic Iron Man figure. Very limited art um, limited articulation. They're getting better at articulating their their budget line, but this isn't anywhere near a Marvel Legends. But it's cool because you get this uh, five and a half inch figure and it comes with this Almost like Hulkbuster kind of uh, suit. And if you look at them, they're kind of roughly the same height. They could like, I don't know, if you have them both, you can have them fight each other. Or if he doesn't want to fight Iron Man, he could fight Captain America in Captain America's mech suit. And of course, Captain America can win. Um, he just throw a shield at Nimrod's head and knock him silly. Or if he, if he wants, he could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the biggest of the baddies. And that's Mech Strike Thanos. This thing is a beast. It's gigantic. <laughs> it dwarfs every everything in its in its sight. It, it could fill up this entire frame of this camera. It's that big and it's beautiful. I love it. Um, 
Yeah, so this is a cool figure. You can swap the head out. I'm not going to do that now. Um, <laughs> I've said this before. My video, my reviews are horrible. Uh, I'm late to the party on this three set, on this three pack. So chances are you can probably just Google this or look about other, someone else's video where they go more in depth about it. So we have this trio of figures. They're all very excellent. Um, if I had to rate Nimrod, I'd probably give him an eight. Uh, I think he's he's awesome. I love giant robots to begin with. And if I was a kid, I'd be all over this. The price is the hard thing to swallow, though. You know, if you paid 80 bucks for this, that's a lot of money. Um, I mean, I've, I've paid a lot for toys, but for something where I feel like I've handled these two figures before in other forms, this is, the only, this is the only thing that really feels original to me and new, but I'm not sure if it's worth the $80 experience. So just wait for it to drop on sale. Keep an eye out on it. And since we're on the subject of these characters, uh, let's share some fond memories I have of them. So I don't have too many fond memories of Nimrod. As I've mentioned before, uh, the last time I remember reading a story with him, he might have appeared in Sword of X or Sword of Ta oh, Sword of X. Um, Powers of Ten. I was confusing it with the recent crossover event. Yeah, so he was in Powers of Ten, I believe, and he, I think it was like Nimrod in the future. I think. But this is a cool figure. Okay, so um, those versions of Psylocke and Phantom X, those kind of represent the way they're depicted in their time with Uncanny X Force. And one thing I kind of, one of the reasons why I think they might have paired um, those characters together in that bot set is because. For a brief while, Phantom X and Psylocke were involved in a relationship, and it was really bizarre. It was really weird, um, and I find it very—I find it very entertaining. So, as I mentioned before, Phantom X—he died, and they resurrected him, and then they, they were th each brain went into a different body. So there was John Philippe, the original Phantom X. There was Dark Phantom X, and this was kind of like his bad side, and then there was. Lady Phantom X, also known as Charlie Cluster, and this is their mom. And the way the book starts out, um, this was published some years back, back in 2013. So this is an, <laughs> we're already looking at a story that's eight years old. So it starts out with uh, Phantom X and Psylocke. You know, they're in bed together. They kind of had this relationship for a little bit, and they're in Paris. They're in love. Um, I can't remember if this was... This might have been after she was going out with Warren, Archangel, I think. But that was some time ago. This is a weird comic. All I remember is that they kind of, they go to Madripoor. And then once they're in Madripoor, they go to the, some sort of weird like sex club where everyone's kind of dressed up as like X-Men heroes or villains. And then here's... Um, here's... I think someone here is pretending to be Betsy Braddock. And that's Psylocke in her... When she's... This is like the real uh, Betsy Braddock as a... Uh, when she's like, I don't know, British or whatever. But this is like, a, I think, an impersonator, I think. It's just someone dressed up as her. Because it's a weird cosplaying sex club. And then I think here's Phantom X. And he has all these chicks dressed as Deadpool. Just like dancing on them. <laughs> so yeah, this X-Men comics were kind of weird. They're always just really weird. Oh, here's an ad for Harley Davidson and Iron Man 3. And then here's Lady Phantom X, also known as Charlie Cluster. I think it'd be cool to release a three-pack of all three versions of Phantom X, but that might be kind of cutting it deep. I don't think a lot of people would know what that is. Because, like I said, this is a very short period of time. Um... There's a lot of eras of Marvel history and X-Men history that I think are just kind of forgotten. And here's Psylocke again. She's kind of in a variation of that costume I was, we're just reviewing. But this one's a little bit more lighter purple. And then here's an ad for Guardians of the Galaxy. And this was before the movie came out. Uh, before the Disney film came out. And I remember when uh, they announced they were making an MCU Guardians, I was talking to one of my buddies, and we are trying to figure out which lineup they'd use. 
because the team has seen different um, roster changes. And uh, this particular team of Guardians, they had, uh, the, of course, you have Star Lord, you have Gamora, you have Drax, Groot, Rec, uh, Rocket, and then Tony Stark was actually part of the team. Um, I think the way they wrote, wrote him into the stories, I think he got bored of Earth or something. And he wanted, you know, bigger adventures. So he kind of joined the Guardians for a little bit. And then they also brought in Angela. Um, and if you know what Angela is, she was originally introduced in McFarlane's Spawn. And she was created by, <clears throat> she was created by Neil Gaiman, I think. But there was something weird going on. And for whatever reason, Marvel was able to obtain the, the rights to Angela. And then they brought her into the Marvel Universe. And she was a member of the Guardians. And as it turns out, she was like Thor's like half sister. And here is an ad for Cap. Looks like he's fighting Armin Zola. Um, so here, uh, Psylocke and Phantom X, they're like having like a lover's quarrel and a dispute, and they're kind of breaking up. And then, so then Charlie Cluster gets upset because, I mean, they share the same brain, these two characters. He's like, you know, she was kind of pissed at him. She's like, what'd you do this time? And then Charlie Cluster, the female version of Phantom X and the other one third of his brain, she runs out to go like see Psylocke and then they have this heart to heart and then they start making out. <laughs> and that's the only thing I remember from this comic book. I'm like, oh wow, that's that book where Psylocke makes out with that lady Phantom X. So, I love this if they just made a two-pack of this. Because <laughs> I'm a pervert. <laughs> and then we come back to this. And, um, there's a, so that whole scene we were just looking at, that was all flashback. And then we have Dark Phantom X. He loves, I mean, like all the Phantom Xs that share the different brains and whatever. He loves Psylocke also, but he manages to capture her. And he's holding her hostage. And then here's an ad for Iron Man 3 figures. Now these aren't 6 inch figures. These were um, 3 and 3 quarters. And they were cool because these were called Iron Man 3 assemblers. So what you could do with these figures, you kind of you could kind of like mix and match pieces. Like this guy's arm, you could take them off and put it on this guy's arm or th their weapons. It's, it's kind of neat. I like stuff like that. So you could take like maybe Iron Patriot's head and s s uh, slap it onto, uh, you know, Tony's body. And vice versa. Okay, so this pretty much winds up this review. This one was very long-winded. I don't think I had anything important to say, <laughs> so I apologize for that. Um, these these are nice figures. If you can find them, it's like I said, I can't stress it enough. Don't pay eighty bucks for this. Uh, you know, unless you want Nimrod really bad, maybe you can find them cheaper. If on, a, on eBay, if you can find someone that's selling them solo, but it's a lot to swallow for 80 bucks. Um, you know, with some two packs, you can buy, you know, there's they'll release Marvel Legend two packs, and those, those will normally go for like $40. Uh, a super big figure like this normally goes for like 30 And I mean, if you do the math, it, it works out where this is hey, 40 bucks, this is 30 bucks, it's $70, but I don't know, for some reason, this paying 80 bucks at one one shot for all three of these. I, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. Unless they gave me completely new character or new characters and new molds, I just had a hard time doing it. Because I already had Psylocke. I wanted this, but I think if I looked hard enough, I could have found the old figure for a, a reasonable price. So yeah, let's wrap this up. My name's Lou. Uh, once again, thank you for checking this out. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you found this video very boring or confusing, I apologize. Um, it's Sunday morning, and I don't really know what I'm doing with my life or my time. <laughs> I'm just really hungry for breakfast. So feel free to stop by anytime, and I'll talk to you later. Take care.